I'm Kenny Burnett, Associate Extension Professor of Elastic Economics in the University of Kentucky Department of Agricultural Economics. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about different marketing options to sell cattle. This is part of our Beef Business Foundation series that was funded by the Kentucky Agricultural Development Fund through the Kentucky Beef Network. Again, the purpose of this video is just to answer the basic question, how can I sell my cattle? There's lots of ways to do this, and we're not going to talk about them all. But I'm going to talk about four common ways that cattle are sold that I think make sense for consideration for a relatively new beef cattle producer. I'm going to start by talking about auction markets, or what most of us probably grew up calling stockyards. Auction markets are the most common way that cattle are sold in Kentucky, and there's a good reason for that. It tends to be the simplest. If I want to sell cattle through the auction system, really all that I have to do is arrange to get the cattle there that day. Most everything else largely takes care of itself. This is attractive in a state like Kentucky where a lot of our cattle producers tend to be fairly small and tend to be part-time farmers with jobs off the farm. We tend to have less time to devote to the marketing function, so it makes sense to let someone else handle some of those details for us. The auction facility really provides the facility, the sale platform, they attract the buyers, and those downstream entities really take care of the marketing of our cattle after the fact. When you sell cattle through the auction system, what I like to tell people is you're really outsourcing the marketing function and you pay a fee for doing that. That fee is what we typically call commission and it can take on a couple different forms. Typically it's in a one either or or some combination of a per head commission or possibly some percentage of value of the cattle. If you sell cattle in larger groups, more often than not, you're going to pay some sort of flat commission fee per head. Generally speaking, it's cheaper to sell cattle in larger groups for that reason. If you sell cattle in smaller groups, you're more likely to encounter some sort of smaller fee per head, but then some sort of percent of value of the cattle as a commission. In addition to collecting a commission, the auction facility is going to also collect a dollar national checkoff, a dollar state checkoff in Kentucky, and charge an insurance fee that covers cattle if something were to happen either at the facility or, or during transport. When you take cattle to an auction facility, understand that they have incentive to try and get as much of those cattle as they possibly can. Let's just say I'm a cow-calf operator and I unload 30 calves. They're going to separate my steers and heifers and they're going to put them into groups that are similar in terms of how they look and what they weigh. This is done to make them as marketable as possible for the buyers that are there that day. They're going to sell those cattle in a competitive environment, good price discovery occurs, and I can pick up my check or have it mailed to me later. The other thing that I think we sometimes take for granted about the auction system, because we rely on it so heavily in Kentucky, is how secure payment is. Because of custodial accounting and the fact that auction yards are bonded, the chance of you not getting paid is almost zero. So it is a very secure way to sell cattle, and it's definitely one that new beef producers need to be aware of. A lot of producers use the auction system and do so for very good reason. Secondly, I want to talk a little bit about video or internet sales. Also a good way to sell cattle, and it's also increasing in popularity. When cattle are sold through a video sale, typically a video is shot of the cattle on the farm, sometimes by the producer, or sometimes by someone who represents the company that's offering the video sale. That video can then be shown or shared out to potential buyers that can then bid on those cattle. So there are some advantages and disadvantages of the video system. Some advantages are, first of all, it eliminates some transportation cost. I don't need to bring the cattle to the sale facility immediately for sale. So there's potentially transportation cost savings. There's also that I lower the risk of those cattle possibly getting exposed to some other cattle that are there at the facility that day. There's some advantages. Instead, I could possibly take them to a weigh station or, or bring them somewhere for weigh and uh, shipping. There are some disadvantages or some challenges. For starters, there's a little bit more uncertainty about cattle that are sold via video sale. For one thing, the characteristics of those cattle are really only known to the extent that they're visible in the video or revealed by the seller. So it's important that you do a good job describing the cattle that you have and have the kind of cattle that you say you do. Secondly, weight can be a little bit less certain. 
again, it's something we tend to take for granted, but what the auction system is, cattle are weighed either as they come in or while they're in the sale room. So having a weight becomes crucial if I sell cattle through a video sale as well. So what oftentimes happens is the seller may video those cattle and offer them for sale and may advertise them with a base weight, kind of their best estimation of what those cattle weigh. And that's what gets bid on. Bid on. And there's oftentimes a price slide or an adjustment made to that price if the cattle weigh more than expected. And that price slide is because of that weight uncertainty and it's designed to protect that buyer from paying more for those cattle than they needed to because they weighed more than expected. Beyond video sales, we can talk briefly about private treaty sales. Private treaty sales can take many forms, but all this really means is I sell my cattle directly to someone else. I don't work with the auction system or the video system. This doesn't happen a lot in Kentucky, but it's something that absolutely can work. We can think about it on a large scale basis. Perhaps I'm a large feeder cattle producer and I want to sell feeder cattle out west, you know, directly to a feed yard, for example. I can do that. Now, a challenge in Kentucky is because we don't have a large feeding sector and don't have a packing industry, it's difficult to make those contacts. And again, that's something that a lot of those buyers do that operate in the state is, you know, that they build those contacts for us. Um, but it's an option. It can also be fairly small scale. Maybe I'm a cow calf operator that, you know, sells wing calves and I've got a background in your stalker operation that's fairly close to me. Perhaps I can sell my cow, my, my calves directly to that background or stalker for their operation. Again, I've got to think about weight considerations. I've got to have some way to weigh those cattle for sale. That may mean I, that may mean that I need scales in the farm. It may mean that we use some sort of buying station of some type where I can weigh those cattle and then perhaps offer a base weight and some sort of price slot adjustment. But we have to deal with the weight issue through private treaty sales. Secondly, don't underestimate how difficult it can be to arrive at a fair price for both parties. Again, with the auction system, cattle sell in a competitive bidding environment. Good price discovery tends to occur like that. If I sell cattle private treaty, I've got to understand that the burden really is on me to know what those cattle are worth. I've got to make sure I'm very much on top of the market so that I know what they're worth. And the same is true for both parties. So again, private treaty sales aren't as common, but there's no reason why I can't use them as part of my marketing plan. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about direct-to-consumer sales. Given that these videos are being targeted towards fairly new beef producers, I suspect a lot of the folks that are watching this video tend to be fairly small. The smaller in scale that a producer tends to operate, the more important it is that they see a good return on per head basis. Direct-to-consumer sales offer an opportunity to do just that, and I want to mention them briefly. Interest in consumers buying directly from producers really picked up during the pandemic. A lot more producers were interested in buying beef directly from the producer, and that was an opportunity. Frankly, I thought this would pull back a little bit after the pandemic, but I've been pleasantly surprised how strong demand has stayed. A lot more producers are now accessing direct-to-consumer markets, and I think a lot of consumers are liking that. One of the simplest ways to step into the direct-to-consumer market is simply to sell sides and quarters, what a lot of us call freezer beef. I can start small, I can finish a few head, I can sell sides and quarters to folks that I know, you know, do some advertising on social media, local paper, Craigslist, however I want to do it, and sell those cattle. You know, like I said, it does offer a really good return on a per head basis. We sell some freezer beef ourselves, and there are several things I like about it. But the most important thing that I like about it is it gives us an opportunity to see cattle from production phase all the way to the end of the consumer level, and there's value in that. There tends to be a learning curve as well. By nature of being a feeder cattle state like Kentucky, a lot of folks don't really have a feel for what it takes to finish cattle, or even what finished cattle look like. So it takes some time to kind of learn your feeding system and your finishing system. At the same time, when you move into the freezer beef world, or any type of direct-to-consumer markets, you move into more of a sales and marketing role, and that can take more time than people realize. You're going to have to spend some time on the phone selling, a lot of logistics. You're going to be the one to get the complaints if, if something goes wrong, and you've got to deal with that kind of stuff. So again, it takes some time, it takes some effort, but I think direct-to-consumer sales do offer an opportunity to add some good value on a per-head basis and are something a lot of folks should consider if it fits with their desires. 
More than anything else, although I wanted to briefly walk through some common ways cattle are sold in Kentucky, I think the most important thing is that you do what works best for your operation and be flexible. As your operation grows, as your operation evolves, probably so does your marketing method, and I hope that you'll be open to that as things change in the future.